So I know everybody's anxious to get to uh, their dinner, so I'll do this kind of quickly. I thought, um, given the last panel and some of the things that so many people have shared today, um, I, when Trump was elected years ago, I, I thought it would be interesting to look back over the last 100 years of what's made America what it is today to remind people of what's at stake and what's being destroyed. So um, I'm going to go quickly through these. These are projects I've done over the years where every year I, I think I have the best job in the world. I get to invite my heroes, my peers, uh, some young journalists and send them around the world to look at evolving topics. Um, and uh, speaking of Oprah. I found my next favorite thing. One Anyway, that doesn't get any better than that in publishing. So um, the project that we've just released, which is the first two printings we just sold out at Amazon, which we're thrilled about, is a look at the United States uh, through the eyes of, of journalists. And I thought this quote from Robert Kennedy was a great way to sort of open it. Uh, the book is smartphone enabled. So in addition to having amazing photographs, you can actually point your smartphone at 63 different pictures in the book. And it plays TED Talks, it plays DVD, uh, talks, it plays uh, YouTube videos. So I'm going to just walk you very quickly through some of this. Um, it's hard to believe that only 100 years ago, uh, women in America were given the right to vote for the first time. And before that, uh, in 1920, if you uh, got pregnant, you were immediately fired from your job. Uh, unmarried women were not allowed to use contraceptives, and abortion was a punishable crime. These are protesters marching with Martin Luther King. Throughout America's history, it's really interesting how people have been brought together by conflict, not just sort of put, you know, driven uh, apart from it. Uh, there was a, I don't know if you've seen the cover of Time magazine this week, but uh, last year in 2016, before the election, 800 women in America said they were going to run for office. This number has now been updated. According to Time magazine, 22,000 women in America now running for office. I like to think if there's any glass half full version of what Trump has been doing, it's that it's woken people up. And I think a lot of people have felt for years, and I'm probably one of them as well, that there's, there's sort of this complacency that our politicians will fix things. It's somebody else's job to step in and try to fix the parts of our society that aren't working. And I think what a lot of us feel now is there's no superman or superwoman. We, a lot of us have lost our confidence in a lot of our politicians. And I think what you're seeing in the streets is that people saying, I'm going to get involved. I'm not going to sit back anymore and just let this take place for somebody else to solve these problems. Last year, during the Dakota Pipeline protests, um, more than 300 different Native American groups came together. It was the largest gathering of Native Americans in American history, joined by thousands of U.S. veterans. Um, Obama had actually listened to their protests and had put the pipeline on hold. The moment that Trump was elected, he allowed the pipeline to go through. He was an investor in the pipeline. One of the worries of the Native Americans is not only was it going to touch sacred land of theirs, but there were 13 million people downstream who would be affected if there were leaks in this pipeline. We've all seen what happened in, in Flint, Michigan. Uh, there have already now been two leaks in the pipeline since the oil started flowing. This is hard to believe, but until 1974, in some states in the United States, uh, America had something called ugly laws. If your physical appearance, because you were handicapped, if your physical appearance made other people uncomfortable, you could be fined or arrested. It's one of the reasons that people that had disabilities were kept hidden from sight. Last year, 4.1 million people watched the Paralympics. This, it, the, the, the astounding progress and how recent some of this is, is one of the things I think a lot of us have forgotten, how, how, you know, how quickly America has changed and what's at stake right now. So in, 19, in 2015, the same-sex marriage uh, legislation passed for the first time, and 125,000 uh, same-sex couples got married. And I love this picture. When the, uh, the, Muslim, the first of the Muslim ban uh, was attempted by the uh, Trump administration, uh, Muslims all over America protested peacefully in places, uh, in public places, to ask to be treated fairly. I'm going to go quickly here because we don't have that much time. But one of the, you know, all of the projects I've done in the past have been actually sending photographers out to create new images. The thing that was really fascinating was we went through back through archives, we went through basements, we went to photographers' families and found pictures that no one had ever seen before. So it was this wonderful sort of putting together a jigsaw puzzle of 100 years of history. 
again, you know, I, I like to think, and again, this is my sort of glass half full version of what's happening with Trump, is that um, it, you know, it's sort of like the sand and the oyster that creates the pearl. I'm hoping that what's happening is that people are paying attention to things they've never paid attention to before. Here you have a Muslim father with his daughter on her shoulders, on his shoulders, and a Muslim, sorry, and a Jewish man with his son on his shoulders working together at the airport in Chicago to protest uh, the first Muslim uh, ban. And obviously the impact of Hamilton is pretty extraordinary, that you have people of all different races playing America's founding fathers, a really significant, important cultural turning point in American history. We went back in time, we found pictures uh, on the left are, is a picture taken by Ansel Adams in the Japanese internment camps. I had no idea that Ansel Adams had actually photographed anything other than uh, horses with moons rising over them. Um, and then uh, this wonderful photographer, Paul Katagi, uh, who then found these original people. He's working on a whole project. He lives in San Francisco, and he's finding the original people in the photographs. These were people that were taken away from their land, taken away from their businesses, stuck in a, basically a, a, in a, an internment camp for two years in just totally in hospital areas. And yet when they came out, they were incredibly patriotic. Um, it was just, and the, the reparation took almost 20 years until they got anything from the US government. We just heard a lot about the treatment of women from Rose and other people on stage. One of the chapters in here, we talk about uh, the, uh, the rights of women, of Jews, African Americans, blacks, uh, Latinos, the handicapped, the gay community. And this is a lot to try to incorporate into one book, which is one of the reasons that we built videos into it. This, these images are from the 70s. This is not very long ago. Look how Madison Avenue reached out and said, this is the way you motivate people. The one, middle one is if you buy the wrong coffee, you should spank your wife, keep her where she belongs. And the, the very unsubtle image on the right about uh, slide projectors, just unbelievable how recent this is. We have some wonderful infographics in the book as well, and I just pulled some of the st st statistics out. Um, and the fact that uh, there were um, only, um, sorry, there were 23 PhDs in 1917, 817,000 PhDs today. Female physicians are 24% today, but uh, female medical students are over 50%, which is pretty extraordinary. I love these uh, images. I'm gonna actually just keep going quickly here. This is the first time that four uh, women astronauts were in space at the same time. And I thank Megan Smith for this picture because she said this is a picture you've got to put in your book. Um, we also found pictures taken by students. This is a high school student who had been bullied um, and decided she would create a graphic. Um, I wanted to show you when you point your phone, there's a free app you download called the Good Fight Viewer. And when you point at this picture, this is the video that plays. That work? Yeah. than three and a half hours of video clips in the book. It's kind of an interesting way of marrying the internet to the 600-year-old medium of the book. I'm gonna show you one more clip really quickly. What do I tell my daughter? Do I tell her that her grandpa's worth more than her grandma? That her dad is worth more than her mom? Do I tell her that despite her education, her drive, her skills, her intelligence, 
she will automatically be valued as less than every man she ever meets. Or maybe, I'll be able to tell her something different. So Audi had nothing to do with it with this book. I just found content that I thought reflected the message we were trying to convey in the book. And I love this quote. National Geographic, uh, when it was uh, sort of acquired by Fox last year, a lot of us are very worried uh, that the, the you know. Uh, the, the association with Fox News and the idea that this is the company that sort of denies uh, you know, climate change was going to now own National Geographic. So a lot of us are pretty appalled. But thankfully, they left National Geographic alone. And in fact, the Geographic, I think, has gotten actually much better over the last year. And this was a whole issue about gender, extraordinary. And what we did is we curated, they had tens of thousands of people either praising them or criticizing them for, uh, for what they did. I'm going to keep um, going here. I'm going to keep going here. We also obviously talk about the dark side. And you know, one of the things that's really sort of sad about America is that we don't acknowledge our failures. We don't talk about the past. We don't talk about the, the, the dark part of America. And if you touch your finger to the stove and you don't ever learn that you've actually hurt yourself, then you don't change. You don't learn from it. And I think it's one of the things that's sort of really sad is that we don't actually acknowledge the things that have not worked in America in order to not keep repeating them over and over again. There's a lot of really tough pictures in the book. This is also Dakota Pipeline. Uh, the, the police used the protesters as an experiment. They brought in people from 20 different law enforcement agencies. They used tear gas. They used attack dogs. They used rubber bullets. They sprayed them in the middle of the night when it was actually freezing out. And the media paid very little attention to what was going on there. In World War I, African Americans were told if they volunteered to fight, that when they came back, they'd be treated finally uh, as equals and with justice. And of course, nothing changed when they came back, despite the fact that they were awarded uh, for many, many uh, acts of, of valor. It's the picture taken by my father-in-law. It's one of the more famous pictures from the civil rights era, uh, Elliot Erwitt. When African Americans were finally given the right to vote, the night before elections, the Ku Klux Klan would drive through black neighborhoods and with uh, uh, nooses uh, hanging out of their cars and say, if we see you at the voting booths tomorrow, we know where to come back for you. And they, so they suppressed voting the way that they're still doing today. I met a gentleman uh, who uh, had gone to a flea market one day and he said he, was, he's, he, collect, he collects things. So he went to a flea market and he was looking through a, an old stack of postcards and came across a horrendous picture of a hanging and he was looking at it completely appalled and somebody came out from behind the booth and thought he, he was looking at it because he liked the picture and they said, Psst, come back if you want to see more of these. These postcards are being traded like pedophilia. Um, it turns out that the U.S. government First of all, I thought hangings, I thought lynchings took place in the middle of the night with people with hoods over their heads. Turns out this was like a carnival. They would lynch people and the whole town would show up and pose for photographs in, in front of the corpse hanging from a tree. Uh, the U.S. government prohibited the mailing of postcards of lynchings in 1912, but the lynchings themselves continued to 1948. So what they didn't want is people seeing them, but, but they did nothing to actually stop them from taking place. When, in the book, when you point your uh, your uh, your camera at different pictures, it also plays music. So this is Billy, Billy Holiday. Southern trees bear a strange fruit, blood on the leaves. I won't play the whole song, but what's interesting is that song was written by a Jewish man uh, from the Bronx who saw a picture of a hanging, was so appalled he wrote the song, and Billie Holiday heard it and made it her signature song. She would sing it in the first integrated nightclub in Harlem, and it was always her closing song. She would never come back for an, for an encore. Um, the radio stations refused to play it at the beginning, and then it became the most popular song in America. Time magazine said it was the song of the century. and. Um, 
the, uh, uh, the establishment came out and said they thought that this guy, Mirapol, who had written the song, had been paid by the communists because it was anti-American. Sounds kind of familiar, right? It's by Gordon Parks, uh, the first African-American photographer to work for Life magazine. We also talk about the role of media in terms of how America changed. Originally, the media reinforced all the stereotypes. And then through television, through Norman Lear, through movies like I Guess Who's Coming to Dinner and last year through Loving, people that were portrayed as the sinister other, as people to be feared because they were different, suddenly people realized these are people just like you and me, that they, have, they, they love, they, they worry, they want to take care of their children, they have the exact same concerns as everybody else. And that helped in some ways to normalize, although obviously we're not there. You know, one of the things I've been hearing from people and talking to people about as we've done this book is, you know, people talk about how bad things are in America right now. And obviously Trump has made it feel to a lot of people that things are actually worse than they are. And it's not to say that there aren't lots of problems. But if you just say to someone who is black or gay or Jewish or Muslim or African-American or a woman, would you rather be in 1917 or 2017? When you ask it like that, everybody goes, oh, definitely today. So the, 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 the progress that we've made is extraordinary and watching this one man and now being backed by these Republicans trying to undo so much of this progress I think is one of the things that's so heartbreaking. And the point of doing this book for us, and, and I want to also say this book is made possible by the Anti-Defamation League who fights day in and day out for the rights of all the people that were, are in the book. The book's not about them, but they made it possible, is that I think we, I want people, my dream is, I'm try, I'm, my dream is that someone will help us put this book into every high school in America. Because I think that kids growing up need to see where we've been and where, where we are and where we're going and what the role that they can play as they go through it. I'm going to finish here in just one second. I just wanted to take you through a couple of the other pictures. The hardest thing for me is like, which of your children make it into the lifeboat? We looked at hundreds of thousands of pictures and trying to figure out you know, which ones were the best ones to tell the story and how do you tell the entire story of the Jewish experience in America or the Muslim or the Black American experience, the African American experience in just, you know, 30 or 40 pages. This is a scene that Americans saw over and over again the last few years. You know, the cops kill someone, there's a trial, six cops are charged, then there's a mistrial, and then they all get off over and over and over again. And what I can understand is, I think most cops are cops for the right reason. I think they're actually there serving the public. And the appalling thing is they circle around the bad cops. It's like, why would you want to identify with and protect the bad apples that are in your group? But this happens over and over again. No one wants to ever own up to it. I'm going to show you one last video and then I'll, I'll close. I know you're all anxious to get off to dinner. This is a, an incredible video. It was part of the StoryCorps project where people invited to come in and have a conversation with a loved one. And Steven Spielberg heard about this and took these conversations and animated some of them. So I'm going to show you my favorite one. Do you remember what was going through your head when you first saw me? I remember when the doctor pulled you out. The first thing I thought was that he was being too rough with you. And he actually held you like a little Sprite bottle. And he was like, here's your baby. That was the most proud moment of my life. Don't tell your brothers, because it's three of y'all. But it was like looking at a blank canvas and just imagining what you want their painting to look like at the end, but also knowing you can't control the paint strokes. You know, the fear was just, I gotta bring up a black boy in Mississippi, which is a tough place to bring up kids, period. But there are statistics that say black boys born after the year 2002 have a one in three chance of going to prison. And all three of my sons were born after the year 2002. So dad, why do you take me to protest so much? <laughs> I think I take you for a bunch of reasons. One is that I want you to see what it looks like when people come together, but also that you understand that it's not just about people that are familiar to you, but it's about everybody. Did you know the work that Martin Luther King was doing was for everybody and it wasn't just for black people? Yes, I understand that. Yeah, so that's how you gotta think. If you decide that you wanna be a cab driver, then you gotta be the most impactful cab driver that you can possibly be. Are you proud of me? Of course. You my man. 
I, I just love everything about you, period. The thing I love about you, you never give up on me. That's one of the things I will always remember by my dad. Well, you said it like I'm on the way out of here or like I'm already to go. So, Dad, what are your dreams for me? My dream is for you to live out your dreams. It's an old proverb that talks about when children are born, children come out with their fists closed because that's where they keep all their gifts. And as you grow, your hands learn to unfold because you're learning to release your gifts to the world. And so for the rest of your life, I want to see you live with your hands unfolded. So there's a lot of videos here we chose because they really tug at your heartstrings. And it, we're trying to make sure that as people read the book, it's, we've got voices of the left, of the right, of children, of people of all these different groups in the book together. We end every chapter with an inspiring story of somebody who's fought the good fight, whether it's Norman Lear or Shonda Rhimes uh, or Megan Smith. We want to make sure that people understand that there's role models out there, that other people have stood up to injustice and to despots, and that America's struggled many times over the past. These are backpacks of, of uh, Mexicans who have crossed the Sonoran Desert and have died on the way trying to get to America for freedom, wearing you know, children's backpacks. Um, you're seeing a tiny, tiny portion of the images in here. As I said, there are just so many pictures and so many stories that we wanted to give people, it's like skipping a stone across the lake of injustice and giving people just a sampling of it to hopefully to inspire people to want to learn more. So, Sefi, thank you so much again for inviting me back. And uh, thank you all for listening tonight. Thank you.